Hello and welcome to another episode of the Citizens of Lorcana podcast, a podcast where we invite you to be part of their world. Today, we are talking about the one year anniversary of Disney Lorcana with our guest, Travis Young. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome to another week. Last week, we had a chance to visit with Disney Lorcana senior graphic designer, Shane Smith, which was super awesome. We talked all about the design of the cards, um, everything that went into that from the beginning to when the product was put out on the printing press. It was a really interesting conversation. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, make sure to go back and check it out. And this week we're talking to uh, a friend of the program that we had on about one year ago, um, Travis Young. And for those of you who don't know Travis, he is the owner of a local game store in Southern California, King Slayer. And been a huge proponent of the game since day one. Like, we were at Gen Con together. I, I think we were being at Gamma together. So, Travis, welcome to the show. Um, how are you? Doing, doing great. Thanks for having me again. It's, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot has, has happened last year. So, I'm excited to, to catch up and see how you guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I still remember... <laughs> The, those days at, at Gen Con, I cannot believe it was a year ago. So, um, well, before we get into that reminiscing, uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, what you do, and what you're about? Yeah, for sure. So, um, my name's Travis. I own and operate Kingslayer, Kingslayer Games in Southern California. We've got three locations uh, in Orange County and North San Diego County. And uh, I've got uh, three kiddos and, and we have a team of 23, it's 23 staff members now uh, that work for Kingslayer and we'll be hitting our ninth year in September um, and mostly trading card based. Um, we do some other D&D, Warhammer, board games, that stuff too, but trading cards is like our, our bread and butter. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's my, I am just managing the, the the team across the the three stores uh to the best of my ability and, and really excited to to grow with card games in, in every direction so um yeah it's my, my life is cards basically <laughs> i remember the one thing that really stood out to me about you from the last time we chatted was how particular you are to the details of making a local game store run and run smoothly and it has definitely shown like i followed you on twitter and you're always like, hey, we have 2,000 subs on YouTube now. Like, you're just always growing. And uh, it's definitely that attention to detail. And that's one of the things I love about Disney, too. So um, kudos to you. And I look forward to talking about all this. But I want to take us back in time to one year ago. Disney Lorcan was first introduced at Gen Con. And I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on this journey. And uh, this is just general. We'll talk about the business side and all that stuff. Sure. But just high-level stuff. What was your favorite Lorcana moment from the past year? Yeah, I was, um, there's, there's so many just from, we do events every, every week. And of course you look at maybe set announcements or, um, rules changes or something, but I, my favorite moment was judging our set, our set championship for, um, for set three. That was really, really fun. And, um, the, you know, the very first set championship that we had for, for Kingstar, I believe, I think it was before the Oceanside one and just, um, and you know, reading the, the rules docs and, and then being with the community for that event. Um, we had, you know, folk, we, it was, the event was like catered for food and, and, uh, and the, the Lorcana does a really great job in the Lorcana community in particular of really taking care of each other. And so, um, you know, running that event and, and watching players perform at a high level and, and that, you know, the promos were really, you know, really expensive. And so there's a lot of like, a lot of stress in the room and excitement and, and, and people just, you know, supporting each other. So it was, it was a lot of fun. How do I, how do I get on board with this, uh, catered set championship deal here? <laughs> it, this, the Kingslayer community is, is pretty special. It's, um, you know, and, and yeah, they, they, they surprise you, um, surprise me every week with, with the stuff that they're doing for each other. And it ends up taking the form of more, like more of like a family environment than than what you'd expect at, at you know a game store or club really it's um people that really care about each other so it's uh really lucky i, f I feel like that is the lorcana community in general um james what mm -hmm. about you what's a highlight for you from this last year <clears throat> i mean like travis said there's so many uh 
if I'm going just from release until today, I'm thinking that at this point it was being in Atlanta and and competing and doing well. Even though I didn't do obviously well enough overall for end of day, just feeling like, you know, I was playing to the best of my ability, competing, being in a room with 2000 other players, having fun playing, even though it was very stressful. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the, uh, the highlight. Oh man. I can't wait but, for the Vegas DLC now. I know. <laughs> like, I really wish I could have gone into Atlanta, but uh, man, September, I got the ticket. Nice. Okay. Um, so I guess like, like you guys both said, <clears throat> there's so many memories, but I'm going to take, this back to Gen Con when we organized that community meetup and it was just so cool to have everybody there we were trading cards we were you know looking at this is our first time getting hands on the actual game and uh this you know was our first chance to actually like slow down look at what we got and uh trade cards and we were just talking and we had no expectation of this happening but probably about 20, 30 minutes into it, Ryan Miller, Steve Warner, and Rochelle Brady come walking through that door and the room, we were like in this little ballroom, it just like erupts in applause for like two or three minutes. And nice. just the fact that they took the time, because conventions are busy, they could have been with their families, they could have been like getting rest, they could have been doing a million things. But the fact that they chose to be there and not just be there, they were there for like a good hour and they made the rounds they chatted with everybody and that that will always be one of my highlights so That's it's great. it's been a special ride it's been an, an amazing journey all right so let's uh let's flip it a bit and go a little bit more uh higher level for stravis specifically because as a, a game store owner uh what are your thoughts on the first year of Lorcana? yeah i i was um the, the first year has been really awesome and people have asked me, um, I will get into this probably in a future question, but I, I stream once a week and we do Lork uh, on Thursdays. So I talk to community members a lot about Lorcana and, um, I, you know, people have different people getting in and out of card games have different perceptions of, of if they're doing well. And they'll ask me like, is this game doing well? And I have to remind people it's only been a year. It hasn't even been a year yet, but it's only been a year since this game came out. Um, I ran some numbers because I'm a little bit of a data nerd, but I looked at our first year of Lorcana at Kingslayer and we had 3,038 event tickets sold in, in the 12 months. So, um, which comes out to like 253 per month. Um, and that's, that's people playing games in the store for a brand new game that just came out not even a year ago. So I think, um, phenomenal, like there's not, there isn't a comparable really to, to other, um, any other card game, like One Piece is really popular and some other uh, other games have popularity, but um, but it's just like wildly successful and something that we're, we, we knew going in. I mean, it was part of, I think I've, I've talked to you guys about this before, but, uh, or maybe I've mentioned it, but part of the confidence of opening our third store was, well, there's a Disney card game coming. Like, like that's, that can't hurt, right? That's probably going to be good. Um, and so, so yeah, I think first year this, this, they, you know, there's things you could talk about that, that can be improved or, um, or, or so on and so forth. But what, what a year for, for the first 12 months. Yeah. Take us on that journey. Um, from the first set where a uh, product was so heavily allocated and people were like, Oh, the game is dead. Cause it's just being bought up like MetaZoo to, to now set four where I can go into most of my any local game stores and find packs of Ursula's return. So what has that journey been like for you? Yeah, I think I think the experience of doing this a while like made that like easier to navigate for us than and a lot of stores opened up for Lorcana. Like there was a, a bunch of stores in the US that opened their doors because the new Lorcana was coming and they wanted to they thought that was a good time to jump in and it was. Um but yeah, I think that's that's super normal. Like the industry throttles um, product allocation based on um, how large of a store you are, your relationships with these distributors that have existed for decades, and um, yeah, I think that's like totally totally great. Product availability is great for players. It's really difficult in the beginning, and there's still a lot of decks that are really expensive in Lorcana, so I think that can still improve. Um, but yeah, I think they hit they hit a pretty nice sweet spot, and if the ha having the availability for over the last number of months has been, been really great for new players, and and um, it's such a like 
there's so many other card games that are really dense and hard. Like the learning curve is difficult and the player base is really well established. And this, like the approachability, um, and, and James knows this, there's, there's guys that play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, at our, our Fountain Valley store that when they like want, when they're in a certain mood, they'll play Yu-Gi-Oh, but when they want to just like, like have fun, they'll step back and they'll, they'll jump into Lurkana. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been great watching the evolution of it and seeing these new communities grow. Yeah, we just uh, need better product supply of these accessories, which maybe leads <laughs> us into the next question. Um, I, again, from your perspective as a local game store owner, what has Robin what has Robinsberger done well, and what could they do better? Yeah, and is this um, I guess as like uh, as like for like store support or player support or like do you have like a kind of a specific direction you I, I would say anything that you as a store owner have had to deal with specifically yeah, so, so that would be product uh op support um communication anything that you have to deal with there there's c compared to the uh, so we, we run organized play for 10 games so compared to the rest of the field it's pretty great like there's um I think there's, I could complain for the sake of complaining, which is a really terrible habit of mine. And I can, and we, and I can, I'll, I'll throw out a couple of points, but I would say like, this is, this is, I really have to reach to complain just because they've done such a phenomenal job for it being the first year of a game. Um, I, so, to, so I'll complain to complain. The things I think that they've have been minor missteps have been moments where they've, um, attempted and from like a game design perspective or organized play design to reinvent certain wheels that probably didn't need to. And it ended up creating a longer cycle towards having a more perfect game. So for example, um, uh, eroding Bucky instead of banning it, I feel like, like was a version where they reinvented, they, in my opinion, might have reinvented the wheel as opposed to using like just a, a, a ban or, um, doing best of two instead of best of three was like very like non-traditional for the card game world. Um, and I think that was, there was one other note I had. No, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, th there's moments like that where I think that they've done things that the community is like, well, that's interesting. Like why, why did they zig when they should have zagged, you know? <laughs> and, but eventually I think they learn over time and then, and then have uh, reeled it in, but that's really, that's, I'm reaching to find any sort of nuance. I was listening to uh, our friends, another podcast overexerted, Benny and Charles, and they were saying, and I don't know this because I'm not super involved in the logistics side, but they were saying with the prize supports for set championships, the promo cards actually just like are very poorly packaged. And I've seen people on Twitter um, have complaints that like there have been chips on the corner of their cards or anything like that. And I think like hearing that i cannot believe that they don't package those a little better if that's true yeah I, and that's i think all most there's little things like that in every supply chain where i think that that can be kind of rough i think there's i think their support is pretty good if they're you know the replacement for stuff like that if you if you would just file and let them know hey this is damaged i think they'll replace it and yeah um as long as they they're listening and they have like a support option which i feel like they do where some games, not to, you know, some organized play companies, not to name names, uh, are like completely unavailable or in other countries, you know. And so, it, compared to for the stores that have been doing this for a while, they, they know how to how to like work this you know, through these process uh, these processes, I suppose. But um, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, over the last few months, you've been learning how to play for the games you didn't know how to play. You've been learning how to play basically every game that your stores carry. It's been pretty fun to watch. Lorcana oh, was one of those. Yes. Uh, so in learning how to play it, what have you enjoyed about the game and what have you not enjoyed so much? Yeah, I, I think the, the approachability is really, really nice. And um, I've mentioned Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and some other games. And, and Lorcana you can pick up and play and it doesn't require a, a huge learning curve. And the community part is, um, it feels, it, the friendliness vibe feels like such a, a forefront um, feeling when you walk into a room to play Lorcana that it, you don't really get that in other games. Like, like I can, I'm, I'm usually playing in our stores. So I have the ability of like 
being the store owner and I can communicate with people and they, and they may more often than not, they know who I am and we can talk about the stream or like, I'm very like available for the community members. So, um, so for other games like a Yu-Gi-Oh that are a little bit more obtuse, I can kind of break into having friendly conversations, but Lorcana just starts with, Hey, we're all, all of our friends are here to hang out. And by the way, we're going to play this game. So I think that, um, that is that is like such a huge advantage to to the game. I think the game design is is really nice. It's really nice for that like uh, on ramp part. Um, and and yeah, I I watch a lot of play more than I play because it, because we stream every Thursday. So I end up um, you know commentating on matches and talking about um, you know the, the cards that that you know the different deck choices and and talking with the chat about you know the games that are being played. Um, and I think in terms of the the maybe the development side if like a, for a design um some of the ways that, some of the card games i really like have these moments of risk reward that you take when you're in a game so like um i'll talk about one piece i've been playing some one piece lately and there are these moments in one piece where you're really deciding like am i going all in here on this moment or this turn or do, am i like holding up to, to play defense and there's like a lot of risk reward moments flesh and blood has this um magic has this at times and I feel like the Lorcana game design ends up being because it's a race to the finish. It doesn't each individual game doesn't have as many opportunities for these huge swings that I've noticed. And maybe you guys can give me some more feedback because you guys have played more Lorcana than me. Um, but that's one thing I think would be nice if they designed the game um, and, and with cards in the future to make it so there's more like comeback potential. Um, and and that would be fun to commentate on and to stream and to play in. But uh, do you guys feel that that way too? I mean, there kind of is with a few of the a few of the decks, especially with Sapphire, with the ability to just lucky dime and and get, you know, what is it, sixteen to twenty lore on one yeah. turn if you yeah. if you've worked it right. Um, but that doesn't happen. It's usually a couple of turns of making that work instead of just mm -hmm. like one big huge turn. It's possible. It's just it's not like if it's something that's like part of the. If it's baked into the other games where that's part of the the game is where there's that like shift that can happen completely in a in a game, I don't know if that's in Lorcana as much on a turn, as much yeah. as you can point to like a decision made for a card that you inked that changed the game. Yeah, going forward, you know, it's like I think Lorcana is probably more of a, an ongoing change of the game or a more subtle kind of thing because of how the, the resource system works. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And in some ways it's more, in some ways that is more similar to something like Pokemon where um, you're, you're both kind of like, you're, if Pokemon's also a race because you're like drawing your prize cards. And so the, the, the game style and flow can be similar. Um, but yeah, I think that would, that would just be like making, I, I like doing mean things in card games. So like, making conditions where you um, can steal your opponent's lore, like more of that, I think is great. There's uh, more of that now. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I love, uh, I love like milling as a mechanic or discarding. So There's more like, of that like, too. I, yeah. So like <laughs> discarding your opponents or, or your own deck, like that kind of stuff is really that, that I think that adds more flavor and the game's early, like in the first year, you know, we're going to be playing this game for 10 years or plus. So we're going to look back and remember like, oh, I remember back when this game was so simple and like, uh, yeah, and four, four sets in. And now we have all this crazy broken stuff that's like so fun in multiple formats. So, so um, I think it's going to be fun to watch the development of that. And we're like, our card pool is so small compared to what it's going to be. Yeah. So I wanted to actually just take like a left turn here since you mentioned it with your streaming. And so... When we talked last year, you weren't really doing any uh, significant amount of no. streaming. And now you're like, you're doing all kinds of stuff. You have at least two, usually two weekly streams of games from different stores. You have your YouTube channel where you're pushing out content for the game, for the game store, uh, for things like going over like your top 10 or whatever it is uh, of tickets you've sold every month talking yeah. about different aspects of building games, talking to other store owners and, and things like that. And then also you just recently started more of a personal journey, a uh, YouTube channel. So like what led you to like each of those steps? Yeah, they, they all, um, I sent, so I went to, 
to 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 go back it, it's last this this past january early january we went to uh, a con in in vegas for um oh god what was the name of the convention is for warhammer um a, not adepticon was it adepticon it was a big war war gaming convention um and it put on by um flg in vegas and it was in, in january and we um i went out there and i was driving back i was really into warhammer that was my from October to like December, I was doing a lot of Warhammer stuff, building that scene in our in our stores, and kind of my my strategy for building communities in game stores is like I fully immerse myself into it and find like the key community members in that that area and learn learn how to get people excited about games. We just we just did this with Yu Gi Oh at Fountain Valley where no one was playing it, and then I like kind of learned how to play and got and found the key community members and now and now that we had like 19 players i think there was more Yu-Gi-Oh players than lorcana last week which was it's because i wasn't there it's because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> and i was so I, I two things was um for this long long-winded answer i sent out a survey at the end of the year which i'd never done before and i asked a question uh, to all of our customers our newsletter is like seven thousand people um that have shopped at kingslayer so i sent a newsletter out and said had a bunch of like customer questions where they could like give flowers to staff members and stuff like that. And I asked like, if we did more content, you know, whether it's live streaming or um, behind the scenes or business stuff, like would people be interested And the, the responses were overwhelming that, that our community wanted to consume more content, including live play of you know, matches in stores. And, and then when I was driving back from this con that I can't remember the name of, um, we, I, I was like, you know, what? I should just, I should just stream me building. I need to build this army and paint it anyways. Why not just like stream it? And, and and there was also this need from or this request from our community to have more content. And I I do really enjoy like YouTube like the video creation process and so, trying to solve that puzzle of like making interesting um, YouTube videos and, and content in different ways. And it's usually like self it's self serving too because it helps the community, allows me to connect with them, and then it's something that's fun for me. So I that's when I started. I was like YouTube first, um, and actually streaming first, and then YouTube like a few weeks later. And I had like the first video I posted on YouTube got 50,000 views on our, our channel that I hadn't posted on in four years, got 50,000 views. It um, inspired a phone call from Robinsberger and they were like, how are you, like, how are you building your Lorcana community? This is amazing. It's like the VP of the VP of sales or the VP of product development for Robinsberger reached out and wanted to know like, how are you doing this? And I was like, oh, I need to do content all the time. And so that was, it was, it was really a community survey of like, is this and, and my desire and interest to doing content again. Um, I guess like additive to that is I had planned on not opening a store this year. I wanted to just do community development and focus on improving the the quality in the, the stores we have before opening another store. So all those things led to, okay, content seems like a good plan. And then the streams just like, they, they kind of took off and especially Lorcana, like we do one piece, I've done Pokemon, um, and, and I've done some Warhammer stuff, but the Lorcana community itself like really loves hopping in and engaging in that uh, that medium for a live stream. And it seemed like there was a void and then you know, Pixelborn shut down. So there's like, I think this desire for more content for Lorcana in general. And um, it's great. It's a lot of fun. And it really, because we have three stores, it gives me, it's hard for me to be in all three stores to connect with the community. But if I can put my face out there and say like, hey, I'm a human being and Yes, I own these stores, but you can come and like hang out with me while we stream and talk about the games that we love. Like it, um, it's been a really like happy combination of things that have worked out, and 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 yeah, that's that's pretty much it. All right, I have to ask you, Travis. <laughs> you have you have three stores. You said you have three kids and a wife. Like, how do you have time for all of this? How, how do you do it? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's really difficult right now um like this last month has been uh been challenging and there's just seasons of life that end up getting really busy and then then they get unbusy because things like i we build we go whenever we do something new at kingslayer i call it going on an adventure and i tell my staff like hey we're going on an adventure again and they're like oh great like what's travis up to and and uh and then we go through that and we hire staff or build out whatever that is warhammer wakana yukio singles streaming whatever and once it's built and working it's like a cool and there's like this relaxed period where we can kind of slow down um like i've got a lot of goals like personally like what i want to accomplish like financially with the fan for my family and all that kind of stuff we live in california so it's expensive and i just kind of looked at my 
my 30s is like, yeah, I'm just gonna burn burn the candle at both ends and be you know be present for my family and, and the kids, and of course, and uh, and I want to have a more comfortable life in the 40s and 50s. So like that's just what we're gonna do. In terms of like logistically, I've gotten better at organizing, um, just generally organizing my life. And so um, like my calendar, um, uh, my to do list and my email are like my main, like if those three things are caught up and um, then really good, I use this like life hack. Um, there's this app called Todoist that I absolutely love. It's I used to use like it's Apple Notes or something for my to-do list, but this app is called Todoist One Word, it's free. And uh, I've made all of my staff that are on the leadership team use it because it's that's how great it is. <laughs> and so that's my to-do list. I'm like on top of my email and making sure I like clean my inbox to zero every day. And, um, and then I use my calendar to schedule everything. So like, I, and I wasn't doing that like three months ago and I felt like my life was much more chaotic, but if I can get those three things in line, then like, I, then I can, I can get through the day. I can wake up and see what's going to happen and kind of like, and, and get through it. I am leaving this podcast more inspired to get my life put together. <laughs> okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to bring this podcast, uh, back on track here. Um, sure. Um, but no, everything that you said was awesome. I just want to bring this back to Lorcana here um, with some specifics. I am curious, uh, what has been your favorite card? Nice. I, um, I've i grown to love and appreciate Haram a lot more the more that I've seen him played. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Pronouncing <laughs> it's Hiram. Right? It's Hiram. Whatever. The Hiram. <laughs> I this is a you. pet peeve of mine. It was like <laughs> listening to the casters call Bokum Bokum. I'm like, no, it's Bokum. Okay, Hiram. Now I know. Now I know forever. It's too bad I had to learn that in a very live setting, a uh, very well, permanent setting. But it's okay. I got after James for it one time. Yeah, he yelled at me. Maybe last it's time just I... a me thing. Maybe it's just a me thing. But uh, no, I looked Hiram's on Google amazing. and I showed it to James, and it was Hiram, not Hiram. I'm yeah. sure Eric has corrected me about that, or maybe James as well. Like, when, and this is the downside. There's many downsides of solo casting. Is that like people just have to suffer me? Like they have to suffer me saying things. Um, so now, cool. Well, my favorite card that I don't know how to pronounce is Hiram, and drawing cards is really good. So, and I've watched more. I think I've watched more games just like fall apart to that card than um, than maybe anything in the last six. I mean, when did that? What what set did that card come out in? Came out in set two, right? Yeah, okay. so it's been around for a while now. Since we've been streaming, that card has just been kind of the bane of the opponent's existence because you're just drawing, I don't know, six cards off of it before it dies or something. It's just so, it's really, really good. Yeah, because it has a high willpower. So it doesn't die, it doesn't get removed that easy. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, James, definitely. James, what about you? What's, what's been your favorite card? Oh, I didn't know I was going to have to answer questions. But I was asking all the questions today. <laughs> it's like a celebration of Lorcana here, right? So yeah, yeah. Gotta yeah get in on this action. Let's see. My favorite card. Oh, geez. There's so many different ones I can pick. You know what? <sighs> Rapunzel, gifted with healing. Healing is good. Again, it's the draw, right? It's always the drawing. It's in that every point of damage, right? It, yeah, heal the damage, draw the cards off the da off the healing. It looks great. Uh, there's the the uh, challenge promo version of it that is, I think, some of the best art in the game. So that card. Nice. I gotta I gotta go with my sapphire heart here, and uh, I gotta say, lucky dime, lucky dime. I mean, that card is so fun. Like James said, there are games where you're down, and you slap down a tomatoa with five items on the board. And you yeah. lucky dime it. Oh my gosh. Like you can go from six to 20, like lickety split. So it's such a fun card. And it's also frustrating when you play against it. It is. You're like, oh, I'm four points away from winning. And then all yeah. of a sudden, lucky dime and, and game over. But it's, it's, it's one of those cards that adds unpredictability to the game. Yeah. I think, I think that's really good to have those, like those win conditions that you have to play around changes up the game a lot. It's awesome. All right. So next favorite is, do you have a favorite ink? It's it's going to be Sapphire. Yeah. I think yeah, I'm a dirty magic player at heart and blue is blue is uh, <laughs> the, the way to be for it, for magic players. I mean, it has all the best spells. So I think, I think that's kind of the thematic for, for Lorcana too. I think a lot of the, you know, the draw spells and stuff for in, in Sapphire, and Sapphire. And we so. didn't get, 
they didn't get anything bad in the new set, right? They got so much new ammunition in the newest set that's coming Sapphire out next week. Fire feasted this set. Yes. Yeah, they did. Then True. Is it was it a five, um, five ink and it uh, draws three, right? Yeah, there's a that's amethyst. I'm pretty sure the oh, finders no. keepers. Oh no, never mind. There's there's more there's still more more draw stuff. stuff. Oh, they they got the one that now we have the uh, basically to let it go for items and locations. Okay, yes. yeah, well, that's that a good one. That's a really good. That's an that's a really awesome card. Nice. Well, we know Jared's. Jared's a Sapphire as well. How'd you Always. know? Always. You know? I, I don't know. I love the ramp. I love uh, the color. Like, honestly, if I'm being honest, the very first card at D23 was the Robin Hood, and I loved the art on that. John Lorin knocked it out of the park. I love that color of blue. It just spoke to me. And yeah. right from then, I was like, Sapphire is going to be my color. And it's been a frustrating journey. <laughs> there have been highs, like very few highs, a lot of lows. But I mean, yeah. we got Sapphire still that's knocking out of the park. Sapphire Ruby at the beginning of every set, like is really strong. And then after mm -hmm. about two or three weeks, it's just like, bye bye. Everybody um, figures it out. <laughs> but, yeah. but like James said, set five, I think, uh, I think we're going to see Sapphire step out of the shadows of being a support color and be like a main color. Yeah, it has been definitely in that. I think, I think set one and set two, especially. I feel like there wasn't a, as much as much sapphire represented. And um, po fun fact: popsicle was was maybe my favorite card. It was close. We did name one of our dire wolves our our like ice dire wolf. We named him popsicle, and we hide him in the Lake Forest store. And if any kids under the age of thirteen can find him, because they, they they move him around, if they can find popsicle, they get a, a like a free card from a binder. So that's awesome. That's the community building attention to detail right there. There it is. James? Uh, mine's Amethyst, mainly because that's the home of uh, not only the the overpowered combo of bouncing and all the things you can do with that, but it's also the home of most of the uh, Frozen cards. And you all know I'm a, <laughs> I'm a huge Frozen fan, so. Nice. Well, well and Travis, and was Travis was talking about card draw, and I was like, Amethyst is the home of card draw. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabbit, that, fox, rabbit, snake. Yeah, yeah. But that new Elsa, man. That new Elsa is going to kill. I know it. That thing's going to be awesome. Um, yeah. So that was the ink. All right. What about uh, this? Is uh, leading right off of it. What about your favorite ink combo? I would go Ruby Sapphire. The just the removal, adding that removal component is pretty pretty fun. That's the deck that I played. Um, in person at, at Fountain Valley was a deck I got to borrow from a community member. And that was, um, that's, you know, it's just the, the Ruby Sapphire good stuff with Sisu and, and all that. So that was, um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Travis, you're a man after my own heart. I refused to play Ruby for the longest time just because I hated Ruby Amethyst. I even had listeners of the show call me out on it. But uh, once I added Ruby into my repertoire, I was like, okay, I see why people like playing this uh, color. And yeah. it's so fun to have the ramp, but also the ability to control the board with Ruby, which I mean, still kind of does the same thing, but it doesn't quite get you there like uh, Ruby does. Um, but yeah, okay. And, and we all know James. It's Ruby Amethyst. It, it is currently. And Steel Song is always going to be like 1A since yeah. that's what I started sure. with. Yeah, um, but we're, we'll see where we end up now because I am not uh, someone currently who is uh, beholden to a specific ink color when building my decks. If I can build a deck that I feel is going to be more of my play style and also be very good, so I'm I'm thinking that with this new set that uh, brewing up some fun decks is going to be something that's going to be interesting with all the new cards that we are getting. I think some new fun stuff can happen. Uh, I'm the same way. I bring a different deck just about every single week. And people are like, oh, what would you bring this week? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I can't settle on a deck. That's fun. I play, I mean, I, that's, I play. Oh, go ahead, Travis. Yeah, I, I think that's really fun to have. That's when you know the game is, is doing well when you're when the community is encouraged to try out new stuff and not just stuck in a certain lane. Or It also shows that it's not... Um, 
you know, terribly cost prohibitive too. For I, I see a lot of times for games that are really expensive that players like can really only afford one deck. So the fact that you can just like throw some different options together um, week, week in and week out is, is pretty cool. I'm glad you framed that in a positive light because I feel non-committal. <laughs> Every set, I'm like, I'm going to settle on one deck and I'm going to master it and it never happens. And then you don't. No, I, I actually ended up playing three different decks at set champs and it only did five. I did five set champs this time for Ursula and I played only three different decks. Nice. So only five. It's a lot. It is a lot. I could have done more, but you know, they, we had comic con last week and so I couldn't do uh, lake forest mm, for sure. Yeah. It looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this one, uh, you know, now, now we're into the controversial topics because we're going to talk about accessories. Uh, what's your favorite accessory? Lorcana specific Lorcana yeah. branded. Okay. I yes. think so. De yeah. De yeah, definitely. I'll give you a bonus, a bonus points that are outside of the Lorcana realm, but, um, the, the brave little Taylor, not the brave little Taylor, the, the Mickey mat, the steamboat Mickey play mat is my favorite. It is also probably the most expensive one, but it is. Um, my son like does a lot of cartooning and that's his, uh, like, one, he's really good. He's a really good artist and he's 11. Um, and that, I, that, that Matt is like very much very him. Like he's into like cuphead and like those types of video games. And so the art style is, is pretty excellent. And for bonus points, um, I have my, we have game genic deck boxes that we sell in the store and they have the cool little squire. Like you can put your, like, so I have our, our little gen con Mickey is in here hanging out. Oh yeah. Um, so it's always fun to have like, a, you know, your like for magic could be a commander, but you could have, you know, your, your, your one of your like key keynote cards on display for your deck. But um, you're yeah. bling, you're bragging, you're humble bragging. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I can put this on my box. Yes, exactly. What about you, James? Any uh, favorite? Uh, accessory, I'm going to say, I think it has to be at this point, the... Um, it's a kind of a tie between the honey wizard and the Tinkerbell play mats. Honey wizard. So good. Yeah. I, uh, man, Travis, we are taking the same answer because Mickey mouse steamboat. Like if my computer wasn't lodged on it, I would take my camera off and you could see I'm streaming on it right here. So nice. that's, uh, <laughs> I, I have started playing games on pixel born connect and, uh, this is my mat. And I do vary up what I take to locals, but um, most of the time, the majority of the time, it's th this mat here. And I didn't realize it was worth so much until somebody last week was like, oh my gosh, that's selling for like $120. Like, oh. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> nice. No, yeah, great. the mats are kind of crazy with how everybody wants them and they never produced enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Come on, guys. You're leaving money on the table here. And maybe there's plans. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's strange. I don't I don't quite understand. But there's weird there's weird stuff like that in different corners of the hobby world too. Where you're like, why? Like, just you know, why don't you print more One Piece? Because people will play the game. But, yeah, um, yeah. But it's true. Yeah. Okay. I also haven't seen like a single Star Wars Unlimited playmat in a store hanging mm -hmm. out either. No, so, yeah, and, you're correct. And those boxes are still super expensive. Like they still. Are. Anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. So. Uh, one of the things that you talked about is you put up these videos where you're talking about, you know, what are the most popular games or whatever. Um, so I feel like you have a good perspective on this, especially being a local game store owner. How healthy do you think the local Lorcana scene is? And I know you kind of like live in your own bubble. So maybe James and I can help um, supplement this with like our experience. But from your experience, how healthy is the scene? Yeah, I think... You know, in, in our stores, um, I was actually looking at it before we hopped on tonight, uh, just to to see. But we had for live live updates, we have 18 players playing Lorcana and Oceanside right now, actually, and um, and that's that's pretty good for that store. That uh, that's our attendance at Oceanside is is, usually, is a little bit less than the other stores, just because of where it's located. And uh, I think it's actually probably a better indicator of like maybe like a rural town in the U.S. Um, and it's it's, it's great. I think that I, I do follow on Facebook and Twitter and see other people talking about um, their scene shrinking or people, you know, people will be vocal about that, that sort of thing. But our, our community is, a, it is unique because we have this like 
uh, group or faction of community members that are, are like very into Disney and they go to Disneyland once a week. And they're like, that's part of what they, their life is just re was revolving around uh, a lot, not every, not all of them, but a good amount of them were, were already really Disney uh, obsessed folks that like really, it's like their favorite thing in life is Disney. And then now a like, card game came out so they can play Lorcana and have their Disney uh, passion. And so it creates this, it's probably not like that. And in Southern California in general, for your listeners that are not here, is is the mecca for card games. Like we've got Frankensons, we've got a place called Ninja Exchange and down towards Oceanside. There's like huge, huge communities of people that play lots of different card games. So we're it's kind of an embarrassment of, of community size. Um, but that's why I look at Oceanside to see, you know, those numbers are sometimes a little more maybe representative of rural America, but um, su super healthy and uh and growing and we're getting new players in all the time. Yeah. That was my main thing is if uh, you found it was growing, if it was bringing in new players or if it was shrinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's new. Yeah. I think if we're getting a lot of new players all the time and, and because we support so many different games, um, people are trying new games a lot. And there's a store uh, on uh, the East coast um, that he's a YouTuber as well, uh, millennium games. And he, his name's also Travis. And I watched some of his content and his, their motto, which I would like was is genius. And I kind of want to steal. I don't know if I remember it word for word, uh, but it's play something new. And I was like, Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I was just, cause we're always trying to get people to play new card games. And uh, it's like, man, nice props. But um, I think that happens a lot. Like people are coming in to play other games all the time or Warhammer or board games or D and D. And then they see these people playing more kind of like, wait a second. And so um, I think it's really healthy for card shops too, is when they have a diver diversity of games. Cause sometimes, you know, card games are going to go, they're going to go stale at certain times in like their development cycle between set releases and um, having options for community members in your stores is, is really nice too. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, James? What's your experience been? Uh, I played at a lot of stores at the beginning. Uh, because of the lack of product, it was the only way I could get product. Uh, now I almost exclusively play at Kingslayer. Um, and I, I mean, usually the only time I go out somewhere else is for set champs. <laughs> um, but it's been nice because it's been so consistent there. Uh, I mean, it's gone, it's gone down on some weeks, but usually you're like, oh, look, it's pouring down a raid, which never happens in SoCal. So people don't want to go outside or, hey, look, it's a holiday weekend you can point to the exact reason why attendance is down, but otherwise it's so consistent that we can expect a certain number of people there. It's really nice. And uh, the stores that I have been to, I kind of keep an eye on what they're doing. And none of the stores that I had been to have lessened the amount of Lorcana nights that they have. Like some that it, like if they have three Lorcana nights when the game started, they still have three Lorcana nights now. And I think that's a really good sign. Mm. Yeah, I play at one game store like <clears throat> exclusively because that's what my schedule allows. And they do cap it, I, I think, 16 people, um, but it's always full unless it's like set championship weekends and everybody's gone to another set championship. Um, but I will say this too, like last week when I went, it was a set championship weekend. So there was only 10 of us there. Like there were... I mean, three women there of the 10. There was a child there. I think there's only like three, <laughs> three white guys there. So it was a pretty diverse group there. And I thought that was really cool. I don't know what it's like at other stores, but I think that's a really good indicator that Robinsberger is achieving what they're hoping for with, with this game and reaching a different audience. Yeah. And I'd, I'd actually like to shout out to Travis because he did implement, we were... At the, at the three stores, it was only like one night a week of Lorcana, and it was mainly competitive. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys recognize the need, and now two of the three stores now have leagues to supplement the, the weekly competitive night, where it's just, hey, it's Lorcana, come and play, like a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon or whatever it is. And, and that's amazing, because then that can be that welcoming time where people, the new like, or who may be like yeah. a little bit like, you know, they come in and they're like, oh, I just got steamrolled by a bunch of people playing meta decks. It's like, well, why don't you come on the weekend and hang out and just like pick up some games and play and trade? And that's a really great thing to have, I think, for a store to with a particular, particularly a game like this, 
where that is the point of like one of the major points of the game is to have that environment that brings in new people. And it is so easy for that kind of a that kind of a thing, the casual part of it. We have some real all star community members that can make that happen. And um, and I, I didn't I mentioned how a lot of times I'll immerse myself and in order to help like build a community and for Lorcan, I didn't, I didn't really have to, I just had to identify like, who are the, who are the all-stars and they, they reached out to me as well. But, um, Brit is one of our, was our community manager for, um, for, uh, I thought I saw you nodding your head. I was like, is he shaking us? He's nodding. His head. I, Jared was pointing at me and I'm like, no, it wasn't me. It was Brit and a few of the other people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it was totally well, the, Brit. There, Brit is, um, it's so awesome that we hired her and she's now working part-time at the store. Um, but she, she was volunteering her time to get um, a Lorcana league, a more casual league. Cause we, Robinsberger had pitched um, really casual play. And because we are more, not that we're a competitive store, but we, we know how to run like performance based pricing. And so um, we didn't, we didn't make a huge uh, area of, of, of the space and time for specifically casual play. And and she and others identified that as a void, and um, and then and then say hey, let's put something together. And so that the the, the the casual league we have at Lake Forest specifically um, does really well, and it also ends up it ends up being um, competitive in ways you wouldn't think. Like a lot of the competitive players prefer to go to that because they can test more games and jam games with friends and like prepare for set championships too, and also teach new players how to play, and also just kind of relax. And then the weekly events can be where they can like really test the, you know, really test their skills. And um, but yeah, you know, Britt and a, a number of community members at, at the Lake Forest store, like really helped us focus in on the casual side. And uh, they're so welcoming. Like they're, if a new person comes into our discord or into our stores and wants to learn how to play a game uh, in this example, Arcana, like they're, they will do whatever it takes to make sure that they feel welcome and have everything they need to have a good experience. And that is, is, um, it's very like to our values as a company, but to, to the, like what Robinsberger is trying to accomplish with the game. And it, it's all the community all stars make it all work. Well, shout out to Brit. It sounds like every store needs, it sounds like every community needs somebody like Brit. So, and I, I remember, I think I was actually, I don't play at Lake Forest very often, but I think I was playing at Lake Forest like one of the first one or two times that uh, her and, and Matt played at at the store. And I remember like just handing over a couple of uncommons that Matt needed to finish out his deck. And then like months later, when I, when I stopped by again for like a casual, like, oh yeah, you remember you gave me some Rapunzel's that one time. <laughs> so, you know, just stuff like that, you know, where it's just, it's definitely just a really cool community that's that's developed and uh it's really nice to see yeah 100 percent. so um on a more global scale do you interact uh with the global scene at all like do you pay attention to everything globally for lorcana or are you just like hyper focused on your community yeah yeah i definitely pay attention if it comes up in my feed but the uh, because i am streaming on thursdays that there are folks from across the world that will hop in and say, Hey, I'm watching from so-and-so place. And then we get to, it opens up a really fun dialogue to talk about their like local scene and what, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really unique and, and interesting when someone's like watching a California weekly event to see how someone plays a deck so they could play it in their deck, you know, in their format in New Zealand or in Europe or something. So I think uh, in that way, it does feel connected and, since the game is so new, like there's not a lot of people streaming live gameplay. So when we are, it's like kind of a special, it's a, it's, it's like, Oh, you could just like go, you can browse these few stores that are, that are highlighting the game. Um, but yeah, it, it does seem, yeah, you know, that's how I say connected at least through, through like the chat basically. I love it. Okay. So we're going to pivot here again. Let's talk about hopes and dreams for year number two of Lorcana. If you can make one change in Disney Lorcana's upcoming year, what would it be? Oof. I'm going to look back on this and be like, I, you know, I, <laughs> I know what I should have said. <laughs> um, I think it'd be, I think it'd be great to have um, t- t- more regionals. I think is, is as simple, simple as that. If we could do a monthly regionals in the U S specifically, um, and, and it could just be b- b- bounce around it. It ends up putting, um, it puts a target on the map or on the calendar specifically 
for local players to have something to test for that are that are have the money or the means to travel to those and it really drives the meta it drives the singles um, demand and price it drives like everything for 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 organized play um and i think that's that's something that can only can only encourage and increase um participation in the game so that's easy answer what about you james this is what i want us to answer as well Uh oh do do you want me to go yeah you go ahead while you think about it okay uh so i want one of the things they talked about forever ago i think it was back in january was they were talking about stay tuned for more information about our you know disney lore kind challenges and fan events so i would love to know what these fan events are is like d23 a fan event or is there something specific that's going to be a fan event um because as somebody who's more of a social player than a than a competitive player um although i feel the fire burning in me this set like i really <laughs> really want to feel good for set five but uh as somebody who's more social i am really curious to know what they have in store for these fan events so that's what i want next year cool i like it i think mine is going to be kind of like more tagged on to travis's which is yes i would like more regionals but actually i would like uh a system i think it's like like pokemon does where playing games matters to being able to get to the higher level uh, where every step along the way increases your chances to get to those higher levels. The better you play, the higher you can get, instead of it just being, I can click a button fast enough to get a ticket, and now I have a chance to compete at mm-hmm. like the highest level. You know, there's there's not... I know the set championships are there, but they're really, they don't, they don't count to anything right now, and I think things like that at some point should count. As you know, as that that tier level of things of going up to from weeklies or casual to set champs to regionals to challenge, you know, the the main challenges to nationals or continentals and on. And just I think that should be more, more there should be more steps in that ladder. That's yeah, fair. I like it. That's fair. OK. Oh, now it's you, James. All right. Here we go. This one's going to be, this one could be tough. Is there a specific character or franchise from Disney that you'd like to see added to Lorcana in the next year? Uh, Mighty Ducks. I want the Mighty Ducks <laughs> uh, animated. That's actually cartoon. possible because they had a cartoon. It is. It is. Just give me, give me the, the ducks. I don't remember the names of their characters. I just remember watching it a lot when I was a kid because there was a lot of synergy because I was into, I was into hockey and and the Mighty Ducks, who were owned by Disney at one point. So that would be that would be the dream. Toy Story bonus for extra credit. That would be awesome. But uh, Mighty Ducks, nice. I like it. Jared, you go. Um, well, I would have said Oswald, but uh, but we know we're Oswald's getting him. Coming. Yeah, Oswald is coming. So I'm going to go with Oswald's good friend, uh, Horace Horse Collar. Um, we've seen Clarabelle. We've seen Oswald. We've seen uh, Pete. We just need Horace. Where is he? He's got to come in here. So anything that's old school, Horace, uh, Hortensia, uh, anything along those lines, the Silly Symphonies, I would love I would love to see those in Disney Lorcana next year. I was just thinking that right before you said Silly Symphonies, I want those dancing skeletons from right? the Silly Symphonies and stuff like that. Yeah, I want I want some old school as well. I can't think of anything new because I know we're going to basically get almost everything at some point. It's just a matter of when. What a cop uh, out! But no, I want I want the I want the dancing skeletons okay, very specifically. Okay. I want the dancing skeletons. Okay, I like it. Is there a, is there a? I know Steamboat Mickey exists as a card, obviously, but it's like a Steamboat location. Not yeah, oh, yeah. Not Thanks yet. So That's a good idea, though. Nice. These are free. These are free. all right uh okay so let's do some rapid fire right yes okay here we go uh i'm gonna uh, you want me to take the first one you can just you can just shoot through all of them these these are about things that uh do you foresee them happening soon and this is this for just travis or is this for all of us to talk about real quick let's just do travis travis you get to answer these here we go 
Okay. Do you think we will see dual colors in Lorcana? Yes. Do you think we will see tag team cards? No. Do you think we nope. will see sideboards? Yes. Oh, controversial topic there. All right. What was the, what was the question before that? Before Side, the, sideboards. Sideboards means we get to sell more cards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of selfish, selfishly <laughs> driving up prices here. <laughs> okay. Okay. But question. So, I mean, there's, you know, I don't know how much attention you've been paying to the set of five releases. But there's that card with Olaf. He's the cost reduction one where I think it's for every exerted opposing characters. He costs one less to enter play. Um, and he's riding on the shoulders of Marshmallow. Does that not look like a tag team card like Olaf and Marshmallow? Oh, okay, yeah. We have Flotsam and Jetsam. We have Flotsam right? and Jetsam. Okay. So when you, about that. when you said tag team, I was envisioning like um like a 2v2 mechanic or something but is it, when you say tag team do you mean like comp like cards that are like pikachu and zekarom like ca cards that have okay got it got it that's definitely coming that's happening yeah. sorry i should have been more more uh clearer here with these questions well, they were rapid no. fire it was just like take them how you take them right yeah, yeah i was it was good it was good i like it okay and uh I put out a call on Twitter for listener questions. We only got a couple, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring those up here. So, oh. da, 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 where's there's my Twitter? Okay, share screen here. All right. So, um, well, first of all, there's a nice compliment for you, which I think you saw already. As a regular, at, so this is from Ricky Business. As a regular at a few of Travis's shops. I cannot be more excited for this. He is the gold standard and a big reason why our local community is as robust, active, and attractive to new members as it is. So congratulations, Travis. Like, it's nice to see that you're being recognized here. Um, nice. Our next question comes from Grex. And Grex asks, outside of competitive play, do you think that LGS locations should do themed league events to give players a chance to think outside the box? And you kind of talked about this a little bit already. Give them a day to play something different, fun, and creative. Do you think that more uh, casual players would enjoy it over the other players? So, um, def definitely. And this is if we look at um, if we look at the, the landscape, um, the, what how this works in other games is they will have a promo or some sort of support card, and, and they will send the store 50, 60, however many copies of this card for whatever event that they want to push. And like we had for um, or whatever cause they want to support, we had it was last month for Commander for Magic. There was like a Pride Night, and so there was a special promo specifically for players that wanted to come and play at that event. And there, there for those events, there could be deck building restrictions or plans, or you know, hey, three color night or something, or or, uh, or or whatever the support, the cause, or the the theme is for Halloween or what have you. And it's really simple. All they have to do is is you know have one promo design for that that event. And send it out and it doesn't even need to be monthly it could just be you know three or four times a year but that would be that'd be awesome and it can be driven through robinsberger and through like some sort of promo support now, it's asking the stores to do this like there's stores that are doing things like this which are fantastic um but it, it is resource intensive on the store to do like graphics and um and you know cost so i think that's it would be awesome yeah and i think that would go towards supporting the social aspect of gaming too like yeah, there's obviously a prize at the end of the at the end of the day, but if everybody gets it, then uh, you're not going to have the super you know competitive decks to try to win the card if everybody's getting it. So totally I like that. Yeah. And I'm 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 still waiting and hoping and praying we get a Halloween themed deck. <laughs> anyway, so this <laughs> comes from Illuminaire Ragnarok. What was the biggest surprise from Lorcana as an LGS owner? Yeah, the. The weekly attendance being as consistent as it was, um, I think that, may, and, and which which le leads into the community side. I'm, I'll, I'll answer it this way: that the, and you mentioned this a little bit earlier. The representation among women in this game is higher than any other game we support, um, not close, and it has 
it has paved a way for uh, inclusion in the stores for other games and for a, just the, like the hobby store culture in general. And that has been so awesome to, to have that. Um, so that way there's, you know, folks feel represented when they come into the shop. So that has been really, that has been really cool. That has changed the culture of our stores for sure, because magic, um, magic historically has been like 95% men and it makes it really, it's really hard for, for folks to, uh, for women to feel comfortable in that situation. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know how they, you know, hats off to to that combination, but it's been really great. I love it. That's a great answer. Thank you. Uh, James, anything else? We had, did we have any, I mean, we had all the cards revealed. I, we're not going to go over cards, right? You're not going to let me do right. that. <laughs> nope. Not today. <laughs> all the cards are revealed. D23 is next week. And, and we're going to be there. Let's mention something that we have to talk about that's happening at D23. We are doing, we, we, uh, we are joining up with Rebecca of the Illuminary and we are doing some meetups, correct? Correct. Hold on. I'm, I'm looking up. He's the bringing up the graphic here. now. So we're doing two different meetups during D23, one in the evening and one during the middle of the show. Um, and as soon as he pulls it up, I will give you all the details because as Great. he goes and finds it here. Um, it's the unofficial D23 meetup. It is unofficial. There is there is no involvement with Disney or Robinsberger uh, or the Anaheim Convention Center or any other entity that we need to mention. Um, the first one is the Illumineer Lounge, Friday at 8 p.m. at the Hilton Anaheim. There is a food court area uh, on the convention center side of that hotel, which is where we will gather. And from there, if there's room with table space, because I think all the restaurants close right around the 8 p.m. mark that we set, uh, there may be tables available where we can sit and play games, hang out. And also some may want to actually head on over to downtown Disney, grab some food, hang out in the Disney vibe, you know, of the whole area there. So basically, it's just like a meet, a greet, a hangout, a play or a run over to downtown Disney and hang out there, depending on what you want to do. Uh, and then on uh saturday at 2 15 in the grand plaza fountain area right there in the middle of the convention center uh outside the doors we're going to do the grinning glimmers which is basically anyone who wants show up and get in, in into a big group photo there's this is actually during an official uh d23 event which is the parks and games meetup at the fountain which is going to be for like a half an hour and basically as a group we can all get onto the fountain and take a picture which if you go google uh anaheim convention center fountain photos you'll see that that is a very popular place for cosplayers and such to take photos and you don't have to be in cosplay you can just be hanging out and be you know be a big lark on a fan to get in this photo it'll just it. cost you one oswald card so that's the small price <laughs> small price <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> only one huh that's awesome. one per person yes one per person oh okay no <laughs> just teasing just teasing no <laughs> that, that won't all be all are welcome and we're super excited to uh be able to meet everyone to uh hopefully be able to jam some games or just even like trade i don't know trade war stories Hang out and talk about the amazing first day because that first day is going to have the panel uh, yes and you know everyone getting the set their hands on the set and the new set for the first time because that's when the new set comes out uh, sorry, Travis. I will not be picking up my pre-order until after the weekend. <laughs> all good. I'm, uh, it's all good. I'm not picking up my pre-order either. I'm sorry. I'm going to D23. Yep. Nice. Um, I think that's really the big news right now is that uh, D23 is next week, and we are going to get supposedly a look forward to the future and yeah, yeah, yeah. See, what's, see what's coming. That's so awesome. this are, are they uh, going to be? Sorry to cut you. Are they doing any sort of uh, Gen Con, uh, any sort of announcements at Gen Con? Are they holding everything for D23? It sounds I think like they're holding everything for D23's uh, Gen Con sound. They're not even selling the product for this set yeah. early like they did last yeah. year where it okay. came out at Gen Con like a week or two early. So okay. this is the this is the panel Disney Lorcana panel past, present and future. And Friday is the one day I don't have a ticket for um, but this part here that I highlighted. Be the first to hear exciting new announcements of things to come in Disney Lorcana TCG. And I'm dying. I'm dying on the inside right now. I didn't think I'd be able to make it on a Friday. So that's why I didn't bother getting a Friday ticket. But uh, I wish I could be in there. I really do. 
that's the way it goes. There's also a mini panel, like in the morning on the spotlight stage for like 20 minutes featuring, I think some Lorcana artists. So, um, that's going to be pretty cool too. I just have to laugh because somebody put a comment at this and they're like, Disney's Lorcana's past. Come on guys, don't get ahead of yourself. And I'm just like, this game was in development for two years before it came out. So it does have a past. Three. It was three years. Uh, okay. All right. All yeah. Right. So it's yeah. been a while. It's, it's the game has existed in, 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 a, in some form for four years now. Nice. Well, all right. Jeopardy time. Is it Jeopardy time? Oh, no. We got it. We're going to get Travis now. I hope yeah. you brushed so up I've been, on your. He has some getting... good. He has some good trivia questions on the streams. There, I have. So I have to I have a confession to make here. So a year ago, when I was on this podcast, I um, actually maybe it's an apology. So my my cousin Jillian and uh, I I referred to her. I don't even know if I should repeat what I referred to her as on the uh, on the stream last year. What I should have called her was this obsessive, lovely, uh, amazing Disney fan who is just passionate about her hobby. Um, <laughs> but she watched me just embarrass myself because I, I think I said I wanted like medium difficulty questions, like acting like I was some all star <laughs> and, and like just got it's just destroyed. I just got annihilated uh, last time. So I, I think you know, that's why it's probably why it took so long for you to take me back was because I did so poorly <laughs> on the trivia. Um, but, uh, to Jillian who she watches all of, uh, my cousin who she watches all of my streams with her, her son, Caden. So they're probably going to listen to this. So, um, I'm back for trivia and we're going to take down a couple questions and give me easy mode. <laughs> all right. All right. Easy mode activated here. So I hope you brushed up on some Cinderella trivia here because that is the theme for tonight. Okay. So for 100, uh, this is the name of the stepmother's cat. Okay, I did do a little brushing up. I have nothing available, so it's all coming from the, the, the brain here. I think it was when I was brushing up. Is it Lucifer? Ding, 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 ding. There you go. 100. We're on the board. We're on the board. All right, all right. For 200, this is why the king is throwing the ball. Is it for, oh, oof. Is it for his son to find like a, a partner? Ding, 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 ding. All right, two for two. Okay. All right, this is where Cinderella's bedroom is in her house. Is it the attic? It is the attic. <laughs> um, I love that he's asking these the as a question when <laughs> in the wrong way of asking. <laughs> I was going to okay. say the like the, the pumpkin, the pumpkin carousel. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is. All right, yes. This I don't know. This one might be a little tricky here. This is the color of Cinderella's dress before it gets torn up. Blue? Nope. <sighs> oh, got bring one in, wrong. In. It's okay. I was already. This, 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 this is. This is where. Up. It's just. It's just a misstep. It's just a misstep. Three. Three and one is pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. That's, yeah. the, the correct answer is what is pink? What is pink? And then okay. the fairy okay. godmother comes. And from what I learned from Casey Robin, who did the, the Cinderella ballroom sensation card, is that her dress is actually silver, not blue. So uh, okay. um, for 500, this is what the carriage is made of by the fairy godmother. Is it a pumpkin? Ding, 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 ding. Four for five. Travis. That's that's, whew, that's better than uh, that. That is redemption right there. It's better than my record playing at locals. Uh, four and one is, I'm like a three and two player at best. So this is, I'm overperforming for sure, but I really appreciate the, <laughs> the softball. <laughs> oh man, I feel you there. Uh, okay. So again, Travis, thank you for coming on. Uh, yeah, a little secret for you. I think you are only our second return guest. I think we've had Eric on like four or five times, but okay. we don't typically do repeat guests. So thank you for coming back on. And again, no, this is fun. If, uh, if uh, people want to find you, connect with you, watch your streams, go to your stores, where can they connect with you at? Yeah, um, so our the Twitch channel is Kingstar Games Live. Um, I'm on I'm on Twitter. It's Travis Young 12. Uh, this, that's there's a bunch of other places, but those are the, you can kind of start there. But 
Um, I just, I really appreciate you, you giving me the opportunity to come back on after that abysmal trivia performance from last, last year. And you, you guys, I know, I know how hard it is to do content stuff for a long period of time and for a year. And that's, that's a testament to you guys really just being dedicated to uh, just the love of your hobby. So I think that's, that's really great that you have been able to do this. And it's, it's you know, I get to see James at the store a lot, and which so I feel um, connected to to the podcast and to you guys um, in that way from from Gamma all the way through now. And um, yeah, I just really appreciate you guys as community members and really leading um, leading from the front for folks that are scrolling through social media trying to stay connected to the game. I think you do a phenomenal job. So uh, I'd love to. Yeah, if it's an annual thing, once a year to check in and see how Lorcan is doing, I'd love to do that. If you uh, stole my joke. If, if, if you'll have me, <laughs> I was going to say, we'll see you again in a year. <laughs> nice. Um, and speaking of content creation, uh, this is kind of a spur of the moment here, but uh, James, I thought we should talk about this because one of the questions we got in the discord was, are you guys going to stop creating content too? Because right now there are a lot of our good friends that are taking breaks. People have been around since the beginning, John T with, you know, the inkwell in this week in ink and the Glimmer Gang, and Live, Laugh, Orkana, and Fortyborn. All these people are our friends, and they've been around for a long time. And one of the things, like you pointed out, Travis, is content creation can be a grind. I mean, James has been, been doing the San Diego Comic-Con forever, so he knows that more than, than anybody else. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, we do it because we have fun. And we've always said if we stopped having fun, we'd stop making content. But I'm still having fun um i'm still like i'm really fired up i put this on twitter today i haven't been this as excited for a new set as i am for set five and i really want to get in on the competitive scene so like we're gonna be here and uh we have no plans of going anywhere anytime soon so james is there anything you wanted to say about that whole situation no uh i mean it's 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 sad to see people go there will be people who come in and go just like people come in and your your store and play and maybe don't show up again who knows yeah um <clears throat> but yeah we're having fun uh this is i mean every week we're gonna be here until it's not fun anymore if that's in in, in four weeks or 40 years we'll see but 40 it's, it's years James, are we going to be doing this in our 70s? Oh, wait, That's right. We're going to be 70s. doing it from the retirement home, the Lorcana retirement home, doing our <laughs> weekly podcast, talking about... We're uh, having a remember... championship at Sunnyside Retirement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. Nah, we're, no, it's good. we're good. It's good we're, we're, still having a, we're still having a blast. I mean, I'm still excited about playing. I'm still excited when cards come out and revealed. And, and uh, so, yeah, yep. we're going to keep yep. on doing this. And so if you liked what you heard, you can follow us on YouTube. Um, you can subscribe to us on the podcasting platform of your choice. You can find me on the website formerly known as Twitter at Citizens of Lorcana. And James, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me everywhere online at Dan Regal. And the San Diego Comic-Con unofficial blog has gone into Odin sleep for the season. Uh, Comic-Con is over, so we will be uh, coming back around again next year. So I will talk about it then. Uh, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you next time.